Tamil Nadu was once central to India's wind energy installations. But after decades of being the state with the largest wind installations in India, in 2023, Gujarat overtook Tamil Nadu in total wind energy installation capacity. While the last decade saw the largest capacity addition in wind in the country, Tamil Nadu's wind trajectory took an uncharacteristic dip. Its addition of 3.17 gigawatt in the last decade was less than half its figures in the preceding decade. So, what really is the story behind Tamil Nadu's stagnation? What learnings does it offer for the future of wind energy regimes of the country? Is there a way forward? We find out. Tamil Nadu was a pioneer when it came to wind energy. Okay, like it uh, encouraged the setting up of windmills, came up with very encouraging policies uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. Most of the wind energy potential of India is in the eight states of Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu was unique among these as it was blessed with the most suitable wind sites for the turbine technologies of that time. By the early 2000s, Tamil Nadu alone accounted for half of India's total wind energy installation capacity. The wind potential sites available in Tamil Nadu was capable of uh, handling the technology that was available then during the initial days. That's the reason this state saw more wind projects coming up. Tamil Nadu was home to many of India's ace wind funneling sites such as the Palgat Gap, Chengotai, Muppandal, Aralwai Muri and Kambam. Classified as class 1 and class 2 sites, these locations saw consistently high wind speeds of 6 meter per second and above available over longer periods. The turbine technologies in the early days of windmills needed such high speeds to operate. But it was in geography alone that accelerated Tamil Nadu's wind installations. Tamil Nadu's pioneering role in wind owed much to the government support which addressed the pressing needs of its textile manufacturing industry. So basically, every spinning wheel is a power intensive industry and they are unable to compete with the other states or other countries which have a lower power cost. And in the initial stage of wind power coming, the wind energy generators were classified as eligible for technology upgradation fund as promoted by the government of India as a textile machinery at 5% interest subsidy was also given. That also encouraged the investors that my members to select to go for the wind energy sector. Tamil Nadu is home to more than 50% of India's near $300 billion textiles market. Tamil Nadu government's support helped start a spurt in wind installations across the state. The biggest was that of wheeling and banking. You can generate wind energy anywhere in the state. The DISCOM will wheel it to wherever you want in the state and you could use it. They also said that uh, the excess power that you generate, that can be banked. Okay. So this led to, I would say, a lot of investments that have uh, since taken place. Wheeling is the movement of electricity from a generator to an end user using distribution or transmission networks, while banking refers to allowing energy generators to deposit surplus power into the grid and withdraw it later when needed. Tamil Nadu's offer of wheeling and banking at minimal cost encouraged investments. By 2014, Tamil Nadu's wind installations had grown steadily to 7.2 gigawatt. This was a third of India's total installations of 21 gigawatt and more than double that of Gujarat's 3.3 gigawatt at the time. So then, where did it go wrong in the last decade? But till 2013, there was a feed-in tariff by the state, which was encouraging. And there was also a lot of other encouragement from the state, like capital power, given wheeling and banking. But when the reverse bidding started coming in, in 2012 and 13 onwards, the bigger players started coming in, you know, that when the small retail market like 10 megawatts or 5 megawatts was not there and the people have started moving into the bigger big projects like in 100, minimum 100 megawatts of 300 megawatts uh, wind farms have started coming in. A feed-in tariff or FIT is a policy designed to support the development of renewable energy sources by providing a guaranteed above market price for producers of electricity. This was one of the existing guarantees into which the wind energy generators in Tamil Nadu had invested. At the national level, 
things started to change around 2014 policy changes were intended to bring more investment into the sector but in tamil nadu it had some unintended consequences for the smaller investors the shift from a feed in tariff mechanism to tariff determination through competitive bidding disrupted the installation of projects by smaller players the transition from a relatively high tariff of rupees 4 to 5 per unit to a more competitive tariff of rupees 2.5 to 3 per unit complicated the calculations of existing investors the report evaluation of wind energy in india by the standing committee on energy assessed that this reduced the profitability of wind power projects in india as a whole the outcome was that large independent power producers and developers were awarded installations for large sized wind power projects but the smaller investors couldn't compete with their low rates driven by large projects of 100 megawatt and more the last decade saw india add an unprecedented 23.92 gigawatt into its wind energy capacity this was more than india's total cumulative installations till 2014 but tamil nadu lost out so when the big players started coming in uh, then the challenges of the land acquirement was started coming in and the cost was very high when you're doing a big project in uh, the state normally in 1991 92 la or windmill ku vande or area va land purchase pannanum appadina minimum 10000 மேக்ஸிமம் டூ லேக்ஸ் அதாவது அதிகபட்சமாக நீங்கள் டூ லேக்ஸ் செலவு பண்ணால் போதும் அந்த ரேஞ்சில் தான் நம்ம விண்மில்க்கு இடத்த பர்ச்சேஸ் பண்ணணும் ஆனால் சேம் ஆப்போசிட்டில் வந்து அந்த ஒன் ஏக்கரோடைய வேல்யூ இப்போ மினிமம் தேர்ட்டி ஆர் ஃபோர்ட்டி லேக்ஸ் போகுது தமிழ்நாடு இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் தோஸ் எக்கனாமிக்லி வெரி வெல் டெவலப்பிங் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் எவ்ரிபடி வாண்ட்ஸ் லேண்ட் இட் இஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி த விண்ட் எனர்ஜி ஜெனரேட்டர் ஓகே ஸோ common economics when the demand goes up the price goes up so the thing is that uh, theoretically yes the land is available but it's available at a much higher cost than any other place and uh, the people like uh, gujarat this other state were offering revenue lands the government lands for revenue land whereas in tamil nadu it was more of a private land so the cost is double up so most of the uh, investment started focusing uh towards that one and you know started moving on to the uh, the other state like gujarat has come that's where we lost in into the uh, you know the race in the meantime tamil nadu's handling of its existing wind energy sector didn't help its cause the last decade so investors lose trust in the state's ability to honor its commitments when it came to wind energy generation the investors in wind in tamil nadu are of several categories one of them is the retail customers who have Uh, some uh, plant which has been operating in a different place for example textile mills or uh, spinning mill so this plants are operating in a different place and they wanted to offset the production through a renewable energy source so this is one set of customers there are other set of customers who in, uh, have invested into it who have some extra money they have invested into uh, wind mills and they are selling the power to the board or for a third party sale this is the classification major classification that we have in uh, terms of the owners of the windmills delays of years in payments to energy generators by the board revisions to long standing tariffs and reversal of incentives led to litigations and standoffs which soured investor confidence if the 5% wheeling charge and 5% banking charges is a historical uh, charge fixed and continued for years together 2012 only the tariff order uh, was uh, completely reversed and the 5% charges collected for wheeling was trifurcated into three charges wheeling charges separate transmission charges separate and tnd losses separate line losses separate scheduling and system operation charges are separate and they increased it according to the 5% is not actually divided into four or five components each component has 5% 5% like that in terms of energy so the wheeling per, for the purpose of wheeling alone we are supposed to pay from 5% to almost 18% that was too highly revised the court cases are still continuing on it coming to the point of banking charges it was maintained historically at 5% till 2012 in 2012 they changed it into uh, 10% when we agitated that it was not re- reversed back again the next the tariff order came from 2016 onwards so 2016 also again that wheeling charges were again uh, again hiked banking charges was also hiked from 10% to 
the next tariff order came in 2018 in that order also the wheeling charges were hiked again and the banking charges were hiked from 12% to 14% so there is a continuous hiking is going on then how the investors of wind energy for their capped use will increase with these continuous hikes that is the question we are mainly putting it the incessant changes had the effect of turning investors away from wind with even court orders unable to bring an end to the disputes the industry has today become a mangled mess industry insiders blame the mess on the lack of a clear cut policy in the state that is why we want to have a clear policy new tariff orders new tariff charges new open access charges should be made applicable only to the new wind industry not for the old ones such changes reverse the concessions granted to the industry existing investors were unhappy see the tnrc regulation itself says that whenever they revisit a tariff order by introducing an increase in the open access charges and all those increased charges would be made applicable only for the wind turbines which are commissioned after the release of the tariff release of the tariff order but unfortunately what they do is the revised charges are being retrospectively made applicable to the wind energy generators which have an earlier commissioning date also and because of that investors cannot anticipate anything that comes in future and cannot rework the entire project planning and all so we need that once a project is designed and presented to the government for implementation whatever charges are applicable on the date of the commissioning should remain as such not only charges but whatever schemes like annual banking and all it should be allowed for the entire lifetime of the machine tamil nadu came up with a thing saying that machines that are 20 to 25 years old or which have theoretically exhausted their uh, life period yeah in the in such cases there will be no banking and adjustment probably the wrong message is going to the investor he is going to view the state as an investor unfriendly state so he is likely to say that look i might as well take my investment elsewhere with their core business of textiles going through a dip such changes pushed investors into cashing in on the value of the land instead so when on one side the spinning mills are not doing well and they are facing continuous losses the first thinking come comes to their mind is to sell off their wind energy to anyone else and even they scrap it and they make the land utilized sold for real estate purposes and all by which they can get good amount of money and they can close the part of the term loans and all and they can reduce their interest borrowings on their loans and all so some safer side a irukonuma abadina yosikkrom alad vera business ku porona inda windmill venda nu mudivu panta or scrap windmill area va sell pandrar avarku safer a mudinju poiru and that brings us to the third aspect of tamil nadu's decade of stagnation its aging fleet and their repowering repowering is a replacing of old windmills with newer windmills with the oldest installations in the country most of which are now 20 to 25 years old many installations in the state need a relook the state's prime wind locations are being occupied by less efficient machines and new installations have been slow to come by in part 2 of this report we will look at the state of tamil nadu's old wind installations and what is being done to repower them